Okay, we're going to move on to the next st step, installing the Mystery Interstellar Arcadian software. Let me pull up the link for that. Mystery Interstellar Arcadian, abbreviated MIA for short, is software built by Team Encoder, USB enabler, bankrupt edition, which allows you to back up, restore, flash, and sideload ROMs and APKs to your IRK Generation 1 cabinet. Okay, at this point, you have the USB enabler into your IRK, and you're ready to move to the next step. You've got your USB enabler already set up. A Windows PC or virtual machine is required. In order to perform a backup, the drive application is running and must, you must have at least 140 gigabytes of disk space free and available. You cannot run the application from a OneDrive location if you have OneDrive sync enabled. Move it off the desktop into the C drive somewhere. When performing backups, ensure that sleep hibernation, hard drive idle, and selective USB suspend options are disabled in your power plan. Always use the provided USB-C cable that comes with the board or you will encounter issues. They mentioned this twice, by the way. 7-Zip is expected to be installed so you can extract the software. I'm not gonna go into a 7-Zip tutorial. You should know that if you're a computer user. Basically, you download the program and it unzips files. Uh, make sure at all times you use the USB-C cables included with the USB enabler board. We have noticed issues while using other USB cables, even if they're high quality. Yes, this was intentionally repeated twice. So they want you to use their cable. Okay, download the link. Download the zip file. Okay, put the zip file in a folder on my desktop I'm opening it up let me see if i can show this how do i do this with this program one second after using 7-zip this is what you should see and at this point you're ready to click on the mystery interstellar arcadian.exe file and that'll open up the program to move on to the next step So I've got the mystery encoder program opened up. I'm ready to install the drivers. Continue reading the instructions. And I have a window labeled RK driver assistant. Click install driver on this window. Okay. I'm clicking on it on the window security pop-up display below. Ensure that you uncheck Always Trust as shown. You can click, you can now click install and wait in a few seconds for the software to complete the installation of the driver. Oh, it says it right there. Install driver. Okay. It says it. <laughs> Okay, so click install driver. Then it says install driver, okay. At this point, you will need to take the USB-C cable that was included with a custom RK team encoder USB enabler board, insert into USB enabler, as well as connect the USB-C to the board to the larger USB-A connector of your board. You will need this cable later, so it is re recommended you either Route it to the back of your cabinet or route it through the vent holes in the control panel. Make sure you use the USB-C cable that was included with the USB enabler board when you received it. Using another USB-C can cause problems even if it's high quality with experience issues. At this point, you're going to bring the cabinet into programming mode. Make sure that your cabinet currently has power and is powered on. Next, go to the USB enabler board and Hold the go for broke. While holding go for broke, press the mystery button one time while continuing to hold go for broke. 
Do not let go of go, go for broke until the software plays a sound indicating the connection has been established. I'm while continuing to hold go for broke. Hold on the go for broke. Now the board is in programming mode and we should see the buttons for backup board, restore board, flash board, highlight. And we can proceed to step Three backing up the board. Whoa. It's pretty dope. PCB detected and driver installed. You can now install Mystery Interstellar Arcadian. Let me go back. Now the board is in program mode. We should see the button. To backup board, restore board, and flash board highlight. We can proceed to step three, backing up the board. Throughout the guide, we will refer to two nodes, programming mode and go for broke mode. The other is OS mode. This part of the guide is entirely centered around programming mode, okay? Backing up your IRK to your PC. Step three, backing up our iArcade to our PC. You'll want to turn off Hibernate Sleep, selective USB sus suspend, and other power options that may make your computer go to sleep while this backup takes place. For a 64 gig board, this process can take three hours. If you have a 128 gig board, you're looking at over six hours for a complete backup. This does require your PC has at least 140 gigabytes available of free space, regardless of whether or not you have a 128 board just to be safe. Backups will be stored in the same folder and drive the software is running on. Get started, you're going to simply click the two backup board icon as seen in the screenshot below. Okay, it says PC detected, PCB detected, and driver installed. Okay. Note that the text on the screen. It's still stating that the PCB is detected before the button is clicked. Once this button is clicked, we'll see progress and 19 partitions will be backed up. If the process fails at any point between an error will be produced, letting you know what happened and you'll be able to safely restart the application and try again. If you continue to have issues, it's advised to reach us on Discord. Once the backup is started, the partition that will take the longest amount of time is going to be partition 19 of 19 user data. While it's, pro while it's progressing, you will see actual progress percentage as shown in the screenshot below. Just leave this alone for a while and let it do its thing till eventually we get the finished mes message below. At which point we are finished and all hashes, etc., have been verified, confirmed, we're on the expected firmware version and so on. Okay, so I'm looking forward to say backups finished. Go to the actual program. I can't do it on streamers. Okay, two backup board. Let's see what happens. Verifying flash size. Backing up resource partition. Do not interrupt this. Okay, so now let it do its thing. Like it's starting to do it. What's going, what's going on? You brought me a sandwich? Thank you. Sandwiches. Make sure it says backup finished. Then you can move on to the next step. You can move on to flashing the board in order to enable additional capabilities of the software in OS mode. So make sure it says backup finish. That's very important. It's pretty dope. Then you're ready to move on to 
Woohoo! Step four. Welcome to the last and final step of programming mode or go for broke mode. After this, unless you need to recover your board from corruption or a mistake you made in the future, you will no longer need to access the buttons on the USB enabler and you can restore your control deck to its full functioning form after completing this step. After this step. From here on, once this is completed, you will only need the USB-C cable by default. The cabinet will boot and which will cover in part three of this guide I'm making. I'm gonna cover it in more detail. To begin, simply click three flash board as shown in the screenshot I'm showing right now. This process should take about 20 to 30 minutes to complete fully. If something should happen while flashing the board, do not use the restore board function. Simply repeat three flash board function have cycling power on the board and restart the application. So you just retry it. This is a complete partition rewrite. And as such, you do not want to attempt restoring to stock again. Instead, reuse the flashboard option as instructed above. While the progress is going here, just leave, leave it alone and let it do its thing. It's going to take 20 to 30 minutes to complete this process. When it's finished, You'll see the message below, and we're finished with this portion of our guide. At this point, after following the instructions on the application and pressing the mystery button one time, go for broke button this time, you will see the cabinet boot normally, and you continue on to the next part of this guide related to utilizing the OS mode. Part three will be entitled OS mode, building game packages, pushing and installing games onto the iArcade cabinet. Hope you found this tutorial useful. If you can, smash that like button. It helps let people know that this is a video worth watching. This has been Papa Brad. Reminding you to always mod your eye arcade and of course stay legit.